Rub up your engines! Today I'm talking about Dodge Caravans. Amongst mechanics and the rest of the world, they're often known as the worst vans ever made. Well, let's see about this particular one. Now, I gotta say, this one was probably better made because it was made in Canada. And the Canadians do a pretty good job putting them together. But you can also see by the sticker, it was made by Fiat Chrysler. When Fiat took over, okay, it's got 115,000 miles on it. And what are the list of things that broke on this car? Well, I'm an honest man. The check engine light came on once because it didn't reach operating temperature. So he put a thermostat in. That's it. <laughs> original engine, original transmission. So how on earth has this guy gotten a Dodge Grand Caravan to go well over 100,000 miles without having to do anything major? As a matter of fact, he even informed me, it still has the original brake pads on it. <laughs> Is he just the luckiest man on earth? Well, in actuality, this guy really takes care of his vehicles and he doesn't drive like a maniac. Now this 3.6 liter engine puts out a lot of horsepower with variable valve timing. The problem has always been with these, not the engines, but the transmissions. And you know what he does? Every year, he gets a suction device. He sucks a gallon of fluid out of the transmission and he puts a new gallon in and a few times he's dropped the pan clean that out, change the filter, put it back on. That's one big reason his tranny is still working good. We're gonna road test it in a little while and we'll see what kind of shape it's in. But he doesn't beat it and he really maintains it. The dealers are giving you a lot of crap now. Oh, it's lifetime fluid in the transmission. You never need to change it, right? Yeah, then ask the engineers like I had. What do you mean by lifetime? They say, well, the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission. And then I say, well, what's the lifetime of the transmission? And they say, well, it's got a 60,000 mile warranty on it. So I mean, I changed the stuff, believe me. He's living proof that if a Dodge Grand Caravan can still be on the original transmission, by him just taking a gallon of fluid, sucking it out, and putting it back in and changing the pan and the filter once in a while, makes it still work good. Learn from his intelligence. Don't listen to, oh, it's a lifetime fluid, never need to change it. No, please, change it. Now, as with his transmission, he takes care of the engine. He changes the oil every 5,000 miles with the correct oil. Don't listen to this 10, 12,000 mile oil change. It's a bunch of bunk. Now, yeah, a lot of these engines. It's the same thing that happened years ago with Toyota and some of their V6 engines in their pickup trucks. People complain that, oh, they got sludge built up in the engine, blah, blah, in these Toyota engines, right? Well, you know how you get sludge? You don't change the oil, it gets sludgy. The motor itself only creates sludge when the oil is too dirty and the chemical additives have worn out, then the oil creates sludge. Now, back in my grandfather's day, even before my dinosaur days, cars sludged up all the time because they did not have detergent oil. The oil was just a base oil, and it would turn to sludge relatively quickly. And the engines, we'd take them apart in the winter, clean all the sludge out. It was a royal pain in the rear end, right? But today, with all the chemicals and all the detergents, all you have to do is change the oil every 5,000 miles. That's it. And even an engine like this, that yes, some of them do have problems. But as far as I'm concerned, just like with Toyota, it's because people weren't changing the oil. That's not to say the engine isn't a lot more powerful than the transmission. It is. If, let's say, he gets rid of this vehicle and he sells it to a teenager who's gonna put flames on the side and he's gonna be doing burnouts going down the road. I had that happen years ago in Texas. The thing lasted six weeks. <laughs> the guy brings it to me and he says, what's wrong? I said, well, your transmission's shot and your engine's burning oil like crazy. So I said to him, well, where'd you buy the car? Well, I bought it from this old guy. Didn't it work when you bought it? Was it a piece of junk? Why did you buy it? He said, oh no, it worked perfectly fine. I said, well, what did you do to it? Oh, I just drove it. Did you change the oil or anything? No, doing burnouts from the stop sign, slamming the brakes on. He just wore it out. If you are a heavy driver, a vehicle like this isn't for you because you will eat up that transmission. They're not strong enough to take a lot of rough driving, but it's a minivan, right? And if you're the type of person that takes care of a minivan, you're gonna be happy if you're conservative and really maintain it. I had a guy bring me one of these with 300 something thousand miles on it, and it was still going. He go back and forth between Minnesota and Florida, back and forth, back and forth. You baby one of these things, even these can last 
if you're not lead footed. So this thing's eight years old. We'll get our computer out and see what kind of shape everything's in. The machine doesn't lie. And while we're waiting, they got the cute shifter here. See, it's just still good shape. You can see they're going on a long trip. They even sleep in this thing. Hey, there's a lot of room in one of these for an elderly couple to sleep while they're traveling to visit their kids and grandkids. Further testing of this Autel, which I've really found to be a pretty amazing machine in this price point. 2015 RT and Voyager, VIN number. And here we go. It's communicating. And we're going to diagnose it. Auto scan. So really, I mean, he's put a thermostat in this thing and it doesn't maintenance. He still has the original brake pads on the thing. Shows the guy takes care of his stuff. And yes, it does make a difference that this thing was made in Canada. The Canadians do a pretty good job building vehicles. My wife's Matrix sitting next door here. That was made in Cambridge, Ontario. The Canadians built that. It's an excellent vehicle. Now it's done. We'll see. There's only a couple faults. And it's stuff that generally people aren't going to care about. The door module. See you reset. A recovery occurred. At some point in time, something went wacky and it fixed itself. So <laughs> we really don't care about that. Another code is for the door module front left. Probably another one we don't care about, but we'll see what it is. Reset recovery occurred. Same thing. <laughs> Who cares? We'll erase that too. Start her up. And start looking at live data. Thank goodness it's color coded. If it's bad, we'll see some reds. Gently scan over it, looking for some interesting data. Injector pulses are all pretty much within specs. Now the long-term adaptation is minus 0 0.8. Okay, hardly anything. It's almost perfect. Zero is perfect, so it's only off a tiny amount. Exhaust cam desired position 115.6, 115.4. 456 pretty close to perfect there and the same thing for the exhaust cam on number two 115.8 116 115.8 it's all pretty close meaning that the exhaust cams are not worn you get a lot of wear there you're going to get a lot of differential between the desired and actual in this case the engine's still in excellent shape and the same thing goes for the intake cams the desires 128.7 128.34 really close gives you transmission information the torque converter slip and everything that's all normal on paper or i should say digitally it's an excellent shape now let's see how this tranny shifts here we go no backup camera in this baby. We gotta look. Still going smooth down the road. Well, it's a tranny shift. Pretty smooth shifts. We'll see what happens on a little drag strip when we get there. But for its mileage, the handle's pretty good. It is a minivan, it's not a race car. Not gonna be taking Mary Andretti corners with the thing. It's not made for that. And he has babied this thing. I don't hear any wheel bearing noise. The wheel bearings are still original and fine. And as you look here, look at this thing. It's getting 27.7 miles per gallon in this big old van. So we hurry ahead to our little drag strip. You can see it's shifting fine, but now this is not a drag mobile. It is a minivan, but it is wet outside. We'll see how the traction control works, how it accelerates. Here we go. We look back, nobody's behind us to rear end us. So on your mark, get set, go. It spun the wheels until the traction control came in. Plenty of power, smooth shifting. Look, look at those shifts. Smooth, under full acceleration. And it is pretty zippy for a minivan. Of course, as you notice, I'm driving at the gas mod just starting to go down a little. <laughs> now, I do have to say, the ride is a little bit bumpy, but I put that down to it still has the original shocks, the struts on it. They're original. They've never been changed. So if you wanted to get it back to a smoother ride, you could put some new ones on if you wanted. But since it still tracks good and doesn't shake, hey, I'd leave it alone. The tires aren't wearing on even. Hey, it's fine the way it is, really. And so road testing, I got to say, this transmission's in excellent shape. Still shifts like a dream. So there we go. A Dodge Grand Caravan, known amongst many people as the worst van ever made. And this one was when Fiat Chrysler made it. What do I have to say about this? This thing is still in immaculate shape. So what's happened? Have I passed into some kind of alternative universe here? <laughs> Where up is down and down is up? Sort of we did, because this guy lives in the alternative universe where people really take care of their vehicles. The average person does not do so. This guy is a fanatic about this thing. He sucks a gallon of fluid out every year in the transmission, puts a new one in, changes the filter, and cleans the pan every once in a while, changes the oil every 5,000 miles, it doesn't burn a drop of oil, and he's an old fart like me. <laughs> he's going to visit grandkids, right? He drives it conservatively. The engine's powerful. 
the transmission will burn out if you drag it around, right? But if you use it for what it was originally intended, a minivan for carrying a bunch of people around, or carrying two people that can live in the back of it while they travel around, they can actually last, especially the ones that are made in Canada. Sometimes you might be surprised that one of these things will last, because I certainly am. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.